Hi there. So in this particular video, we'll be moving forward with another type of derivative contract and at the very same time, we'll understand how exactly to calculate the price and as well as the value of the contract that we are going to discuss. So the contract that we are going to discuss is the FRA contract that is a forward trade agreement. All right. Uh, I'll give you a recap from level one what exactly is this contract and then we'll move forward to um, we'll move forward to calculating the price of the FRA contract. So forward trade agreement, you know, it is a pretty simple thing. If you could recall from my level one example that say for example i am you know starting a factory all right so i would be needing loan uh, six months down the line for a period of 12 months all right so i do not need a loan right now but after six months i'll be needing a loan for 12 months but what i'm worried is at this point in time what i'm worried about is if after six months what if the interest rate increases all right so fra contract allows you to enter in such kind of agreement whereby you can lock the interest rate right at time period zero for after six months for a period of 12 months all right so you're locking the interest rate there you'll be borrowing the money here for a period of 12 months so that is what uh, fra contract helps you out with and this particular position where the person is borrowing the money is known as the long fra person and at the very same time the person who is lending the money is known as the short fra person all right so this is exactly how things work around all right quite simple and quite easy to understand all right now the next thing that we need to understand is say for example the long party has already agreed to borrow the money after six months for a period of 12 months so he has logged in a interest rate of four percent so what if after six months that interest rate rises now the long party is happy why is the long party happy because he had agreed to borrow the money at 4%, 5%, whatever rate we uh, have, you know, have it, we have it in the contract. But if the interest rate increases, say for example, to 7%, 8%. So now he has the, you know, the liberty or he's, you know, really enjoying it that he'll be able to uh, borrow the money at 4 to 5% only. So that is one thing that we need to understand that the long party or the person who has agreed to borrow will gain once the interest rate increases will gain once the interest rate increases and at the very same time the person who has lent the money will gain uh, will gain once the interest rate increases uh, and uh, will lose rather once the interest rate increases and will gain if the interest rate falls all right so this is something that we need to understand so uh, very simple the entire thing will be keeping it from the long party's perspective that we are going to talk about uh, we, even we are going to calculate the value from the perspective of long party and then we'll put a negative sign uh, to calculate the profit or loss for the short party all right so the timeline is pretty simple say for example the timeline which we discussed right now was after six months for a period of 12 months so you are standing here you're worried about the interest rate that after six months the interest rate might increase so you are agreeing to borrow after six months for a period of 12 months all right so that is how exactly it works around fra contracts are generally denoted in this way uh, two into three for example so what does two into three means after two months so first word stands for after for a period of three minus two for a period of three minus two one month all right so say for example if i give you three into seven what do, what does it mean after three months after three months for a period of seven minus three four months for a period of seven minus three four months all right so two into three fr is nothing but after two months for a period of one month uh three into seven fr is nothing but after three months for a period of four months all right so this is exactly it works around remember the contract gets expired after two months only all right in this case the contract gets expired after two months only in this case the contract gets expired after three months all right so this is exactly how it works around uh, generally what we are going to discuss in FRA is the you know the underlying rate or the underlying interest rate that we are going to use is going to be the LIBOR what exactly is LIBOR basically outside US if there are uh, transactions or there are loans being exchanged by banks uh, by big banks in dollars terms all right so the reference rate that which they use it uh, uses LIBOR all right so in the very same way if they are doing it for uh, in terms of euros so they use Euribor all right so LIBOR is just a ref reference rate that in case if you are uh, taking loan or giving out loans in terms of dollars outside US, then you use the uh, reference rate as LIBOR. All right. So there are some facts about LIBOR that we need to know. All right. LIBOR is quoted as 30 upon 360. So they do not really consider the entire concept of 
a compound interest but they rather work on the concept of simple interest and they consider a year to have 360 days rather uh, rather than 365 days and likewise for a month to have 30 days rather than having 20 31 30 uh, th those variable uh, days in a month all right uh, so at the very same time they use the uh, concept of simple interest and not compound interest that is something that we're going to understand in the qu uh, uh, question as we move ahead so the first thing first that we need to understand is calculating the price in an fra contract so the price that we calculate is known as the forward price in an fra contract which is nothing but the forward interest rate what exactly do you mean by that forward forward interest rate so we were talking about taking a loan uh, after six months for a period of 12 months all right after six months for a period of 12 months this is what we were considering now this uh, rate after six months for 12 months you know this for this time period the rate that we are going to talk about is nothing but your forward rate is nothing but your forward rate all right so this is exactly it, how it works around all right so say for example now we have a uh, fra contract of one into four that is after one month for a period of four minus one three months remember the contract gets expired here itself all right we are not going to use the concept of months here but rather we'll convert it into days so it is one into four so it is after 30 days for a period of 90 days all right so the entire timeline you have is of 120 days so after 30 days you are taking a loan for how many days for 90 days all right so this is how exactly it works around so now what we need to calculate is the interest rate that we are going to lock in for this particular time period so long party has agreed that he'll be borrowing the money after 30 days for a period of 90 days all right long party always borrows in the case of fra and the short party has agreed that after 30 days for a period of 90 days or three months he's going to lend the money all right so and goes without saying the long party would be happy given that the interest rates rise after 30 days and the short party would be happy given that interest rate falls after 30 days so to calculate this particular rate or right, to calculate this particular rate uh, we'll be requiring two rates one is the entire 120 days LIBOR all right standing today and the 30 days LIBOR standing to here all right after we know these two numbers this number and this number will be able to calculate this particular portion all right so 30 days LIBOR and 90 120 days LIBOR is what we need to consider 120 days LIBOR is nothing but 5 percent 30 days LIBOR is nothing but 4 percent all right and what we need to consider is the interest rate for this particular time period so it's pretty simple all right it's pretty simple what you need to do is you need to take the longer time period interest rate in the numerator so that is what i've done 1 plus 0 0.05 into 120 by 360 all right we're not taking to the power of 120 by 360 because LIBOR believes in the concept of simple interest and not compound interest all right so one plus that number you divide it by what you divide it by the smaller timeline so that is nothing but 1 plus 0 0.04 into 30 by 360 all right so since you have added one to both the numerator and the denominator to calculate the rate you will be subtracting one out of it or it will be subtracting one out of it so let me do it uh, i'll be calculating it uh, with you guys so i have not written the answers in this particular one so 0 0.05 multiplied by 120 divided by 360 plus one so that would be 1.01667 divided by 0 0.04 multiplied by 30 divided by 360 plus 1 that would be 1.0033 minus 1 so let's divide both of them 1.01667 divided by 1.0033 minus 1 into 100 so that is nothing but 1.33 percent all right 1.33 percent now this rate you have gotten it for how many days you rate this rate you have gotten it for 90 days all right this rate you have gotten it for how many days for 90 days now you need to understand all right i made a box here so i'll just put it here yes now you need to understand that rates are generally not quoted uh, for 90 days or for 120 days they're rather quoted for uh, annual day for the entire annual time period so that is why we had this four percent five percent for the entire annual time period all right four percent was the LIBOR for the entire time period standing today and 120 for five percent was likewise for the entire time period but generally we, it is definitely for 30 days and 120 days but these are annualized rates all right and that is why see what we have done here is we have de-annualized things what we have done here is we have de-annualized things so you're de-annualizing things based on the number of days for which the LIBOR is 
and likewise you're doing it here as well. But at the end of the day, what you quote is the annual rate. All right, what you quote is the annual rate. So no doubt we've gotten the rate here. We've gotten the rate or the or the effective rate that we're going to pay for these 90 days. But at the end of the day, we need to quote it for the entire time period of one year. That is, we have to analyze this thing. So 1.33% is nothing but your 90 days time period uh, return uh, or your rate since it is for 90 days so for analyzing it what you do here you take 360 in the numerator and you take 90 in the denominator what you did here was uh, the opposite of that you took 120 in the numerator 360 in the denominator uh, 30 in the numerator 360 in the denominator because here you are de-analyzing things now you are analyzing things so you will be taking 360 in the numerator so effectively you are multiplying it by 4 so that would be 5.33 percent all right 5.33 percent i'll just verify it 1.33 multiplied by 4 that would be 5.33 or 5.32 percent all right so quite easy to you know really calculate it what you need to uh, be careful about are these things all right you need to only take the uh, simple interest part you do not have to add one first all right the common mistake which most of you would make is you'll add 1.05 first and then multiplied by 120 by 360 this is against board bars all right you first multiply all right you first multiply and then add one you first multiply this thing and then add one all right and likewise once you get the answer then you subtract it by one all right and then you need to figure out the annualization part if this contract would have been for 180 days you would simply have taken 360 divided by 180 all right so make sure that you are looking after these things and at the very same time do not go and use the power and at the very same time do not use uh, 365 days anywhere all right so these are some of the points which you need to be aware about fra contracts i'm hoping that you revise fra contracts uh, once before you know you really get with uh, get started with the formula or get started with calculating the price so uh, the idea was simple here price in an fra contract is nothing but the forward uh, the forward interest rate all right the interest rate at which will be able to borrow money after a certain time period so that is exactly that we have done here that is exactly the calculation that we have made uh, we can do it for uh, you know any timeline that we get because the idea is simple you take the larger timeline in the numerator you take the shorter one in the denominator you might you subtract one from it and once whatever answer you get you analyze it because here the rates are analyzed irrespective of for 30 days or 120 days and likewise you need to analyze the forward rate as well so this is exactly how you do uh, do the pricing calculation for the fra contract now what we'll do is we'll understand few more questions on pricing of FRA contract and then we'll try and figure out how to really calculate the value of FRA contract at two points in time. One at the expiration of the contract and one at uh, one uh, before the expiration of the contract. All right, so that is pretty simple. The idea to calculate the value would exactly be the same how we did it for forward contracts. You will calculate the new price and you'll subtract it from the old price and then you'll be discounting things. All right, so this is something that we'll understand in the further videos.